let's move on to the key figures then okay, so i'll move to the documentation part as such and before getting into the key figure discussion probably let's also talk about a simple planning process right uh, the way the logic works from the normal materials requirement planning perspective okay so the starting point for planning is always a demand right now take an example of a simple industry where you always plan based on the forecast only right so simple concepts you would have already uh, heard up from planning perspective is in industry there could be different types of planning strategies right one planning strategy can be make to stock okay. another planning strategy could be planning with financial don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos okay. and then there could be another one which is made to order which is more from the uh, once the actual sales order comes then only i will start producing it right? so it's not that relevant from planning perspective so these are the two widely used planning strategies where uh, take, if you take an example of what what do you mean by make to stock and planning with final assembly right so you have a industry where you always plan based on the forecast irrespective of the customer orders right in that case that scenario will be applicable as make to stock kind of uh, planning sector right whereas uh, there could be a scenario where you also you plan based on the forecast but the sales orders within the short term horizon are also considered uh, for planning and then you can plan the uh, replenishment based on whether the forecast is higher or sales order is higher right so there in that industry uh, maybe uh, you would hear a term called as forecast consumptions sales orders consuming the forecast okay i'll i'll discuss discuss and describe that uh, topic uh, how it works like looks like so take an example of consumer goods right where uh, you would any industry would plan based on the forecast irrespective of the sales orders uh, during the specific horizon right so that industry will follow the make to stock kind of planning strategy whereas uh, you have a, a industry maybe a kind of a job work industry where uh, you would also want your incoming sales orders to influence your plan right because your forecast accuracy is not that great and there are ad hoc sales orders which comes uh, as part of the uh, your order management process and at times that sales order can be higher than your forecast for that period and you do not want to lose that order because of the uh, lack of planning right so in that scenario you work with a planning with final assembly same yes now coming back to a normal case take an example of make to stock right so the starting point for planning is you have a demand right which is the output of your demand planning right which becomes a input for your supply planning right so you have a demand the demand would be either at your customer location or even it could be at a shipping warehouse location okay so in this example i will talk about the starting point as demand you are generating for a product for a specific customer and from there we'll take it ahead okay because out of the box sap functionality the uh, time series supply planning heuristics also start from that side so what system does it it checks what is the demand for that customer and then step 1 it tries to find out the source source of supply right which is the location or warehouse that will replenish or ship that goods to my customer so it will create an receipt element at customer side and kind of a dependent demand element at my location side or my warehouse side right that dependent demand is used in the next step for calculating the net requirements right so now uh, one more parameter to be cross checked is let's say i have a demand 
for that specific customer in week three, as an example, okay? And the lead time it takes to ship the goods from my warehouse to customer is one week. So what system does is step one, it tries to first of all, find out what is the source from where this material can be shipped. What is the lead time between the warehouse and customer so that it offsets that much amount of lead time and put the demand on the warehouse uh, considering the lead time, right? Then next one is system identifies. Now, if there are, let's say, if the same warehouse is shipping to multiple customers, so on the same warehouse, you will see multiple demands coming in from different customers, right? So that will be summed up and used as a total demand at the warehouse location level. Right. So next step is maybe a dependent demand calculation at warehouse level. Now what happens? Once the dependent demand is calculated, which is a total demand at that warehouse, system tries to check the net requirement calculation. So to do this net requirement calculation, it checks how much of the receipt elements I already have on that warehouse. So what do what are the examples of receipt elements? Stock on hand in that warehouse is one of the example, right? Second one is incoming purchase orders or stock transport orders coming from uh, either another warehouse or coming from manufacturing plant. That could be another receipt elements. Some stocks are attached from manufacturing plants and which are in transit to my uh, shipping warehouse. So that can- Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP video. And we also addition of the reset element. So what system does it? It sums up all these possible reset elements, right? And then deduct it from the demand Right, and then it calculates the net requirement, which is nothing but demand minus possible receipt elements. Right, so demand is coming from customer. Receipt elements are example of stock on hand, in transit stock, open purchase orders, open stock transport orders for that material in that location. Right, it will sum it up and then it will calculate your net requirement, which is nothing but a shortage. This shortage needs to be replenished. Now, as a next step, what system does is it tries to find out what is the procurement type for this warehouse, whether the material needs to be sourced from another warehouse or it needs to be sourced from manufacturing plant or it needs to be produced in that warehouse. Right, that depends on the procurement type. So it identifies the source of supply. Now let's take an example in our uh, hypothetical example. We were thinking that secondary DC will source it from primary DC. So in this case also, system will identify a primary DC as a source. And then it will try to calculate the replenishment quantity. Okay, so net requirement may be let's say 100 in this case. However, the replenishment quantity can be different, right? How? Because it depends on the lot size, right? Lot size could be minimum lot size or uh, lot sizing procedure, right? So you may decide that whenever I source this material in the, this warehouse, I will always source it at least with a minimum transportation lot size of 500 and also using a rounding value because my container covers at least 25 pallets of uh, goods, right? So it will be always in the multiple of 25, right? Now, although my demand is 100, but my minimum lot size, transportation lot size is 500. So what is system is going to do? System will replenish, my, replenish quantity equal to at least minimum lot size which is 500. So it will determine the lot size to be replenished based on the minimum lot size and rounding value concept. 
and pass this demand. So based on this net requirement, it will generate the replenishment element. It could be purchase equation, stock transfer equation, etc. from the order based 